For many parents, choosing how to pay for college can be one of the most stressful times. One of the things that often gets brought up for parents is, should I take out a Parent PLUS loan or should my child take out a private loan? Should my child take out a private loan and I be a co-signer? There are pros and cons to each, and in this video, we're going to discuss the differences and what you should be considering to make this decision. What's going on, everybody? I'm Danny Sinowitz, The College Dude. If you haven't yet, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. So what we're going to discuss today is the difference between private loans and Parent PLUS loans. Let's first start by talking about how each of these work. So the Parent PLUS loans are going to be in the parent's name only as opposed to private loans, which sometimes can be in the parent's name and sometimes can be in the child's name. Almost every single time, though, if it's going to be in the child's name, it's going to require a co-signer because private loans are going to require some level of credit history. So if the child has a credit history and he or she can apply on his or her own, then it's very possible that he can just have the loan in his name as opposed to the parent who needs to be required as a co-signer. With Parent PLUS loans, though, the child actually has no involvement whatsoever. The only involvement that the child would actually have would be if you transfer from a Parent PLUS loan to a private loan in the child's name, which is a little bit sticky, not always necessarily recommended. We did a video on that a little bit ago if you want to check that out. However, it's not necessarily something that you should be jumping to do. You want to make sure that you check boxes off the list if that's what you're going to be looking to, to accomplish. So even though the Parent PLUS loan is only in the parent's name, what you can do is you can take these loans out up to the full cost of attendance for the child's education. So why that's important is oftentimes when parents notice that there's a gap between scholarships, grants, and some of the other loans that could be offered directly to the student and the full cost of attendance, that's usually when parents look to close the gap with Parent PLUS loans. You can do that. But that can also create some problems because parents could be taking out larger loans in their name, which they may not have a repayment strategy for. That's why it's important to make sure that you are in the federal repayment system and there are things that you can take advantage of, such as income-driven repayment plans. And another thing that you can take advantage of is public service loan forgiveness if the parent qualifies. All federal loans have some level of forgiveness associated with them if you're on an income-driven repayment plan, but you want to be aware that if you're on the public service loan forgiveness plan, that that needs to be in the parent's name, not in the child's name. So the parent needs to be working for the eligible employer, and the parent needs to be the one certifying his or her income every year, not the child. With private loans, rarely if ever are there ever, ever going to be any types of, of forgiveness programs. Some state agencies could offer forgiveness plans, but those are often few and far between, and they're going to require that the student work at a qualifying employer, oftentimes taking a lower salary, which may or may not make sense. You certainly should not take out a private loan with the intention of going through the forgiveness because it's oftentimes going to be a lot higher interest rate and it's not gonna be as favorable in terms of repayment. With Parent PLUS loans, while you can borrow up to the full cost of attendance, private loans are gonna vary. If you have credit worthiness and the lending institution determines that they're willing to loan you out for up to the full cost of attendance, you could take out a private loan which can give you the amount that you would require. There are some key differences though between the Parent PLUS loans and the private loans that you need to be aware of if you're balancing the two. The first one that you want to be considerate of is the interest rate. For Parent PLUS loans, it's going to be based on the 10-year Treasury note, and then there's an add-on percentage. So for the 2023 to 2024 school year, the interest rate on Parent PLUS loans is 8.05%. For private loans, it's going to vary on the credit worthiness of the child and the parent, or I should say the co-signer, but it's also going to vary on what the interest rates are at the time, such as the 10-year Treasury note. You could notice that you could get a lower interest rate than a Parent PLUS loan, or you could see one coming in at higher. It all depends on the credit worthiness. Something that you really want to be aware of, though, is the difference between the Parent PLUS loans and some private loans is that Parent PLUS loans are a fixed rate. Private loans can either be a variable rate or a fixed rate. It depends on the promissory note and the conditions in which you are taking out the loan at the private institution. You want to be very aware of the type of loan that you're taking out. And the first thing you want to be considerate of is the interest rate. 
As we talked about a little bit earlier, one of the other things that we want to consider are the federal protections that are in place and then the private loan protections. The private loan protections are all going to be built, again, inside the promissory note. One thing that you want to be aware of is what happens in the event of total disability or death. Because in the event of death or disability, as defined by the Department of Education, Parent PLUS loans will be forgiven. They can be forgiven either upon the death of the parent or of the child. As a result, you want to be aware that if something tragic were to happen, that that Parent PLUS loan debt is wiped away. For private loans, it may or may not be wiped away. It depends on what is written inside the promissory note. We touched on forgiveness a little bit earlier as well. Federal loans do have access to forgiveness programs, whereas private loans really are only going to be eligible for forgiveness programs through your state agency. You want to be aware of your state of residence and some of the terms and conditions if a private loan is going to be forgiven. But inside the promissory note, you're not going to be likely to find any type of forgiveness options. In my opinion, the biggest difference between Parent PLUS loans and private loans are going to be the repayment strategies. So inside Parent PLUS loans, they are direct loans, so they are subject to some of the direct repayment strategies, such as the graduated, the standard, and also some of the income-driven repayment plans. You can get on an income contingent repayment plan, or you might be eligible for any of the income-driven repayment plans, depending if you use the double consolidation strategy. For private loans, typically they're going to be in 5, 10, or 15-year increments. You can typically defer some of the, the payments up until the graduation of the child or a few months afterwards, but for federal loans, you can defer those six months after the child's graduation. Once the child does graduate and the, the forbearance period ends, you are then in a position where you're going to have to repay. If you're in the consolidation strategy for federal loans, you can continue to pause on your repayments. For private loans, you may have refinancing options available to you, but that's something that's going to vary from provider to provider. When it comes to the actual application process, what you need to understand is that Parent PLUS loans are usually easier to apply for and don't take quite the same look that private loans require. Private student loans are going to be just like almost any other type of personal loan in that banks are going to want to see your credit worthiness. What Parent PLUS loans require is that you don't have an adverse credit history. By checking the Department of Education website, you can see the exact definition of what is an adverse credit history and some of the things that you can be looking at to determine if you're going to be eligible for a Parent PLUS loan or not. Some of the key factors that you want to be considering if you're looking at a Parent PLUS loan versus a private loan. Number one is whose name you actually want the loan to be in. If it's a Parent PLUS loan, you know for sure it's going to be in the name of the parent only. You're going to need to have some type of an agreement with your child if you would like them to help repay that loan. But legally speaking, there's nothing requiring that child to have to repay. If you are taking out a private loan, the private loan can be utilized where either the parent is the one taking out the loan or the child can be the one taking out the loan with the parent as the co-signer. The way that a co-signer relationship works is that the debt will still show up on your credit score. However, you are not legally responsible to pay until the first borrower defaults. If the primary borrower does default, you would then be the one that's responsible to pay and it would kick in under your payments. Something that I recommend for any borrower is that you look at what the repayment will be upon graduation. It's four years away and interest will accrue. You may also have some situations where you could be looking at forbearance, but ultimately what you wanna be looking at is how much is the required payment going to be on a monthly basis at graduation. For both the child and for the parent, that's important because depending on which type of loan you take out, that's going to have a big effect. To follow up on that point, you also need to be aware of the federal protections that are in place versus the private loan. For federal protections, they cannot be understated. Public service loan forgiveness, the repayment itself, and many of the other things that, that Parent PLUS loans can give to you can be a great benefit. But what you may not be aware of is that Parent PLUS loans also could have a higher interest rate and a higher origination fee than a private loan would. So when it comes to the actual net dollars that are repaid, a lot of it is going to depend on the repayment strategies of parents and the job profession in which the parent could have because that could determine and tip the scales whether you should be looking at private loans and public loans. The last thing you want to be considering is the actual loan balance itself. For smaller loan balances, private loans may be more of a fit. 
But for larger balances, Parent PLUS loans could be a fit from both the cost of attendance standpoint, but also the repayment and the income-driven side of it as well, along with the forgiveness side. Regardless, it's important that you make sure that you have a plan going into college how the repayments are going to work. Unfortunately, student loan debt is a problem for both parents and children alike. The baby boomer generation is carrying a larger amount of student loan debt, and it's something that's affecting generations across the spectrum right now. But by educating yourself and having a plan in place, you can have a debt strategy that can get you to and through college, but also get there on the other end where other goals are not going to be affected. As always, this information is meant to be educational in nature and is not meant to be taken as specific advice. If you have any questions, be sure that you are reaching out to your financial planner, your tax preparer, and your tax attorney or anybody else who is helping you when it comes time for planning your finances or planning to go to college. Again, be sure to check out www.thecollegedude.com if you haven't yet. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and be on the lookout for more great content when it comes to saving, paying for college, and looking at student loan repayment strategies. Until next time.